Hi, Patrick Dean here. Thank you for uh, watching this video. And I want to tell you uh, something has been driving me absolutely out of my mind. And I wanted to share this with you because I really uh, just it's 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 crazy. And uh, what I want to talk about for a moment is our uh, social media. And it's funny, I'm talking on social media about social media. But I wanted to talk about social media. And I wanted to talk about this amazing algorithm that uh, people that they've developed that once you start clicking on something, you go down a rabbit hole. And what you're going to do is get more and more and more uh, videos or uh, other kinds of, of advertising or comments or uh, you'll be exposed to what you believe in even at a deeper level. So you start to buy into something and then you're inundated with reasons why you're right. And I think there's like this addiction for all of us to want to look at social media and go, oh man, I see I keep getting all this stuff about how right I am about my judgments and about my assessments of other people. So um, I, I, I want to take a step back for myself about that and found, found myself into a lot of anger and judgment over the way things are going in the world. So uh, I have to remind myself of a story that I heard. And the story is one of one I want to share with you. And it's a story about this really famous uh, Zen monk. And he was visiting California from Japan. And uh, he went to Yosemite. And he was standing at a viewpoint place uh, in Yosemite where you could see all these waterfalls in the Yosemite Valley, which is, if you haven't been there, it's an amazing, amazing uh, uh, national, national park. And so he is watching this, the great beauty of, of it, watching these waterfalls. And he turned to his companions and he said, you know something, as I look at this waterfall, I've experienced that this is like life. This is like our lives. He said, we flow together from a source. And then what happens is we go over the fall. And he said that process of going over the fall is like being born into the world. <laughs> and then he said, our lifetime is that time that it takes for the water to fall to the bottom. And then at the bottom of the fall, what we do is we join together again as this river. And he said, I think the greatest challenge and the greatest suffering that's caused in the world is that when we go over the fall, and we're separated into millions of tiny drops that we think we're separate from each other, that we forget that we're from the source and that we forget that we belong to each other. And we go through this life feeling separate from each other. And I think what that causes is this feeling of loneliness and this feeling of not belonging or this feeling of we're not making a difference and as we go through our life, and so what happens is we start to grab on to anything that's going to make us feel like we belong to something, any idea that we can grasp onto that's going to put us in a group of like-minded people, or we have this tendency to just uh, want to belong to, uh, gr like I said, groups of people or ideas or whatever. And that's a natural and innate tendency in all of us because we don't want to be alone, right? But what happens is throughout the social media, what we're doing is we're getting all this stuff that's inundating, inundate, inundating us. <laughs> and what's happening is that we're feeling like uh, we're sort of belonging, but it's not really real. So what I, I started to do was el eliminate or moderate the amount of uh, the amount of the politics, the amount of all this stuff I see in the world uh, in my social media viewing and cut it way back because the fear that's used to sell everything, to sell the ideas, to sell, to grab money is, uh, is one of the driving forces and the context behind it. I don't want to live in that experience of fear, which translates, according, of course, into anger and upsetness and all that kind of stuff. And then my righteous need <laughs> to be right about stuff. So, um, taking a look at how we absorb everything that's coming in and then kind of uh, through our own commitment, uh, uh, take a look at reducing that amount of stuff that keeps coming in on us. So, um, 
my challenge here is how are we going to do, what are we going to do to create us feeling and recognizing that we belong to each other again? How do we get back to that place? You know, I, I mean, we, we're in disagreements and we look alike and we have different ways of doing things and we have different viewpoints and we have different contexts from which we operate. But it doesn't mean that we don't see the co connection between us all. And I think what we need to do is start to move toward that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my experience and I'm going to start to train people to be coaches. And when I say coaches, I don't mean professional coaches working with people like that, but I mean people that can get in there with people. So if you want to, uh, let's say you want to have a deeper level of relationship, or you want to help somebody through a challenge, or you want to, you, you, you want to be um, uh, uh, connected or make a difference in that way out there, I think there's some skills to learn. And you don't got to be a professional coach to know them, but those skills are powerful and can get us to a deeper level and a deeper level of connection with each other, which I think is critical right now. So that's my commitment. But for you, you guys, whatever you decide to do in your business, how do I make a bigger difference? Who do I need to be to do that? Or you can ask yourself, um, in my family, where can I back off my need to be right and start to make connection with people? Or anywhere out there. I mean, walk someone across the street, help them with the groceries, look around to see how you can be of service, little things like that, visiting people that you haven't visited in a while, check on people, just be a person that's taking a proactive stance to reconnect with people beyond all this right and wrong stuff that we're into now. Even the smallest thing is smiling at a person, for instance, uh, you know, and being out there with an attitude that, uh, 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 a I don't know, a positive attitude or an attitude that really uplifts people is really powerful. So you, we can do something, all of us can do something all the time toward this. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, let you know that's what that's what that's kind of what I'm going to be up to. And uh, uh, I know, I know that we can shift this stuff around. Uh, as it easy it is, is to get into all the separation and all this anger and all this righteousness, uh, I know the other side of that is, um, a doorway we can walk through and reconnect with the humanity and other people uh, way past what they uh, kind of believe or act or act out or whatever. Um, so anyway, uh, go out there and make the difference you were born to make. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Have a great tomorrow. And know that you and who you are really does affect a lot of people. And so take care of yourself physically. Make sure that you're around to uh, <laughs> around to carry this on so we can do this together and we can start healing uh, a healing process in which we allow ourselves to um, get in there with other people and um, see what you know live the live the purpose that we were put on this planet for from my point of view anyway thank you guys uh, we're gonna do some more small videos as we go along but uh, I appreciate you watching this bye bye